Hi, um, these are some of the models I've been working with uh, recently. I thought I'd show you today. Um, first of all, we have a stone sled. Um, this is about a metre half in um, width and probably about three metres in length, I would say. Um, these are all done with 1 to 3D cut, just up to photo them as you see right now. And the reason why I'm showing you these in particular is because I think they're quite interesting for the technology itself. Um, you can see the camera positions uh, for this one. Um, this one's a relatively big feature, I'd say, but the most important reason of showing this one is that it's quite complex. Um, you've got loads of stones, you've got loads of detail that you would want to really pick up. And you can take a photograph of this, that would be fine, um, but then you wouldn't have this sloping effect, you wouldn't grasp the totality of the 3D model. Uh, or you could probably plan this, but it would take ages to plan each individual stone, while it took me about 20 minutes to do the entire thing. Um, so this is a good example of how 1D3D catch and photogrammetry in general can be used to record archaeological features. Um, you can also see down here there's some some skeletons, sorry, some um, some bones. Uh, if I'm mistaken, these should be cow bones, sheep bones. I can't remember exactly, um, but you can you've got the totality of it. Um, and as I said, 20 minutes to do so. So pretty easy, pretty quick. Um, the camera angles don't have to be too complex. Um, it's the usual two spirals. You can see the, the inner spiral and the sort of further out spiral so it's quite easy to to achieve um, moving on this one here the this is a pit um, which is full of pottery a lot of nice complete pots were found within it um, again there is a reason for showing you this one in particular the detail of the pots itself isn't marvelous but you can get a good idea of how they would look within the pit itself Again, something which would be quite hard to achieve without this kind of technology. Um, and you get quite a good effect. You can see it from the size as well. Um, and you can zoom in to see the nice complete pots as well. Um, so it's it's a good way, again, of planning a recording a site to show how it would look like prior to the complete excavation of the site itself. Um, after that, this is another one. I was showing you some bones before. This one here is a set, different type of bone, but still. Um, these are probably cow bones, and you can see quite nicely, like you can see that's a vertebra there, that's another vertebra down there. Again, not 100% perfect yet, but it does capture uh, the spread and the way they were placed really, really well. And again, you can plan this, but you won't have the exact amount of detail and beauty that you get from looking at a 3D model of it in a way. Um, so this is a good, it's a great tool for recording in situ finds I would say. Um, then these are a series of pots. Um, this one you can see a nice little decoration on the top here. Um, and I think this one's come out with quite a lot of nice detail. You can see like, little holes there and also the surface is really really nice and if you look at it um, as sort of point cloud you can see it's not got too many but once you zoom out you can actually see it's the surface itself is quite um, it's quite well covered which is which is good for this kind of model which is great um, so yeah you can get quite nice detail and again it's the usual two spirals around it you can see the camera position it's quite easy to do um, similarly this one it's got a pattern on top and you can see the pattern quite well you see all the lines cross crossing lines so very very nice here um, you can get rid of the background if you wanted to even it's not necessary in any way but it did um, help quite a bit to actually make the model and then this one here even nicer you can see like really really nice detail very very fine detail you can see the grains um, in the pottery itself um, the back of it could do a bit more work to be honest but um, you know this side is really really nice I think and you can go in quite nice detail and you can see exactly what is going on as if you had the actual pot in your hand so again we're moving from 
recording features, planning um, features, to recording small finds as well. It shows how much 1 to 3D catch and photogrammetry uh, can be used for archaeology. Um, this is, is again returning to a deal of, of big features. This was about 2 metres um, in length, I'd say. It's a very, very big pit. And again, the photographs, if you look at it, not many. Again, probably two or five three spirals in this one. And then what you get is really good detail. You get um, quite nice um, surfaces and you can get all the sections all the way around. And it's all recorded very, very quickly, very, very efficiently. Again, 20 minutes and you can make these great models. And finally here, again, we have, I think this is a, Iron Age, no, this is a Bronze Age uh, boundary enclosure ditch, and it's cut into natural, you can see a natural underneath, but I think this model especially captures exactly how the base um, reacts, and it's it's such a complex base that to have it recorded as well using photogrammetry is, um, I think, really, really useful, because you can zoom in really nicely and get the full detail in a way and I don't think you can achieve this in any way through regular methods or recordings or planning photography sort of but again I think adding the third dimension the dimension really really helps and given how easy it is to achieve and how little time it needs needed I still think photogrammetry is one of the best ways ahead for archaeology and not only archaeology but in archaeology especially